So then she finally gets to, I want to teach children in third world countries. Her whole face lights up, and it's like, okay, now do we think we have it? Now we've really gotten to what she wants and to something that the universe can support. And she did this with several different people. And um, it was, you know, it was fun to watch. It was kind of funny sometimes, too. Like, one of the women stood up and said, um, interesting, only women stood up, but <laughs> um, said, my heart's desire is to go to ministerial school. And Kathy Ann said, hey, I went to the Emerson Institute, and they might censor me for this, but I don't believe that's your heart desire. <laughs> it wasn't that fun. <laughs> you know, ministerial school is some work here. So, you know, what the desire was was really to be a minister. And then, you know, so she said, why don't you guys do this with your friends? Pick somebody who will tell you the truth, who will look at you. And, you know, you can also do it with a practitioner. But it really is important to get clear on what we want so we can have it. And she found, she said she found, and um, this is not unusual, that people would, you know, try to, um, saying my heart's desire is, and so they're kind of saying how they'd get there. They're trying to plan it out. It's our job to find out what we want, and then the universe helps guide the way of how we go about it, okay? Because when we try to plan it, so often we limit it. How about money? Okay, I want, you know, I want $100,000, okay? And, um, so I'm hoping that I'll win the lottery. Or, you know, I'm like, if I say how I'm going to get it or that, you know, um, Joe Brown will give it to me, then I'm really limiting the universe. It could come from anywhere. Who knows? So being clear on what we want and then opening to be to that inner wisdom to be gu divinely guided to how to get it. The intention experiment also then focused in on prayer specifically. This was like intention, you know, kind of coupled with meditation. And, and then it did prayer specifically, and I love their definition of prayer. A super intention, a joint endeavor. You do the intending, and God carries it out. I think that's, that's great. So <laughs> they did some, you know, real specific studies on prayer, and so in one situation, they had um, people from groups from fundamentalist churches, Buddhists, Catholics, Baptists, and members of Unity, and they asked them to pray for uh, people in a hospital, and then they had a control group, of course, and what they found was that 30 to 50 percent of the people improved greatly by being prayed for. But what did the next experiment show by somebody else? That people being prayed for got worse. <laughs> and like, oh, what? So they're looking, okay, what's going on here? So in the second experiment, they didn't tell the people, the first one, they didn't tell the people how to pray. In the second one, they asked them to pray, these were people who were going through surgery, to pray for no complications. So what is the universe here? Complications. That's why we say, don't say what you don't want. Don't focus on what you don't want. Focus on what you do want. I mean, maybe you have to think of what I don't want to get to what I do want. But then get that energy on what you do want. So how you pray makes a difference. And of course... You know, we start with recognition that there's one infinite mind, infinite love, one God law, and that we all, the unification, we all live and move and have our being in it. And then we declare what we want as if it's so. And then we give thanks. And then we let go. Well, in this research on prayers that the scientists did, they noticed that for prayers to work, it not only involved the mental push or focus, you know, this is what I want, but then it required some kind of a surrender or letting go. 
I thought that's so perfect because, you know, we want to keep kind of, I'm going to hold on and make sure it happens. That's not our job. And when we're doing that, we're not believing all the way, are we? Because, okay, maybe this person's not going to do it right. Maybe the universe won't really get what I want. We have to know exactly what we want and let go. And one more thing I wanted to share. <clears throat> so interesting, um, a neuroscientist and psychologist, Richard Davison, um, who works in a university of Wisconsin's laboratory for effective neuroscience. So this guy really is, you know, a pretty intense uh, neuroscientist. He f studied people who did advanced forms of medica uh, meditation and, and prayer, and he found that you could measure the results of them, that when they were in these meditative, intensely, uh, intense prayer states, that there was like a peak intensity and they could measure it in brain waves. Well, what were the results? So they found that the four sections of the brain, I didn't even know we had four, need to look at my biology again, synchronized more when these people did this and stayed that way. And they also found that people who did this, their intuition was increased, that they were more conscious of that like inner little voice, that divine guidance. And also that the part of the brain that produces joy got bigger. And they got happier. So they took a control group of people who hadn't meditated at all. And they taught them how to do mindfulness meditation. And they had them practice for eight weeks. And they again found that what they call the happy thoughts part of the brain was enhanced, and also their immune system was enhanced. So what do we conclude from this? Meditating and praying can make you happier and healthier. Not too bad, huh? <laughs> I want to increase that joy part of my brain, so I'm having fun all day long every day. So you do have all the tools, humanity does, but we specifically have great tools in science of mind to make our lives what we want them to be. We have the tools to eliminate the hell from our life and to heal, to reveal the good. So, are you going to use them? <laughs> all right. What do you choose, hell or healing? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>